Okay, on to our next speaker. Tish Stropes from Fisher House Foundation. Tish Stropes is the Vice President of Strategic Initiatives for Fisher House Foundation in the United States. Fisher House Foundation is best known for a network of comfort homes where military and veterans' families can stay at no cost while a loved one is receiving medical treatment. Tish is responsible for Fisher House's involvement with Warrior Games and Invictus Games. Additionally, she oversees the HERO program, which helps keep families connected during the healing process. Programs for Serving Families USA. Please welcome Tish Stropes. Like all of you, I am part of a family. I love my family. I should also tell you that I love Fudge. So I think what I love most is that my family and Fudge have a lot of things in common. Both are generally very sweet and both have a few nuts in them. So I was raised in a traditional home environment, a mother and a father that both came to the United States from Cuba when they were 11 years old. I'm a middle child and have an older sister and a younger brother. Um, we grew up in Florida and I gr after graduating from high school, I went on to Florida State in Tallahassee, Florida to, um, to go to college there where I earned my Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degrees. And then I was off and headed to Washington, D.C. Around the same time, I met my husband, Doug. Um, Doug was an Air Force officer who had graduated from the Air Force Academy. At the same time, I was heading to California as an instructor. We started dating, and three years later, we were married. That was some 22 years ago. So I always say I married Doug and I married the Air Force. So as an Air Force spouse, I know the challenges that our military families face. I was right in the thick of it. I earned my master's degree while taking care of two small children. We moved eight times, including to three different countries. When we moved to Japan, we were blessed with our now 21-year-old son, Zachary. He's a lot bigger than those pictures now. Um, and three years later, we headed to Canberra, Australia, where we picked up another souvenir, our 19-year-old daughter, Sydney. She used to tell people that her mother was a kangaroo and her first year of life was spent in a pouch. I don't remember that <laughs> very well. Um, but what was so amazing to us, the time we spent here in Australia, and I think it's important to note, is that Australians get it right. They put family first. And that was something that for the first time during our military career, we truly felt um, that, that that was a priority. So thank you for that and for giving that to us. When we returned to the United States, I decided that I needed to get in shape and start running and find some friends to do that with. Uh, we decided we would run the Marine Corps Marathon and raise money for an organization that at the time I had never heard of, Fisher House Foundation. So I knew very little about Fisher House at the time, but I figured if I raised money for a great cause, then it would ensure that my family would never need to use the organization. I loved running with a purpose, lacing up my shoes and running every mile for a family that Fisher House would be taking care of. We raised $85,000 that year, a small group of us, towards Fisher House. And some three years later, we were lucky enough to move to Washington, D.C. I had kept in touch with, with many of the folks from Fisher House, um, and now they needed some help around the office. And so I volunteered and later dumb lucked into a great job, I say, um, running their Hero Miles program. This was the beginning of my nine year journey with Fisher House. And you know what I can honestly say is that Fisher House working there has never been a job per se, but rather Fisher House has become very much just a part of my everyday life and who I am. So the constant throughout my wild life and my time at Fisher House has been family. We celebrate the highs together and we support each other during our lows. I feel very fortunate that I work for an organization who gets it, whose motto is because a family's, sorry, because a family's love is good medicine. So what is Fisher House? Who are we and what do we do? So Fisher House. We believe family is the best medicine. So we support not just this active duty service member or the veteran, but rather the entire military family. Because a family serves together. And so we want to ensure that every single member serving, whether it's a family member, whether it's that active duty member or veteran, is taken care of. 
We build comfort, comfort homes next to military hospitals and VA hospitals so that when your loved one is in the hospital, your family can be right by your side. Fisher House has a very unique public-private partnership with the government. So what this means is we can go in and build a house privately, just as you saw there, and then once it's done, we gift it and we turn it over to the VA or to the military service branch where that hospi hospital is located. Ultimately, we bridge the gap between what the military can and cannot do. So imagine a home away from home. It's basically the closest thing to your home. It's very similar if you've heard about the Ronald McDonald House also for kids. That's what Fisher House is, but the focus being the military and the veterans and their families. Our homes range anywhere between eight and 21 suites. Um, the average 16 suite home today costs $6.8 million. And we are sure that when we're building these houses, the house will be, me will be meeting all of the standards of the government um, and of the VA. And that's typically why that cost is so high. They have a lot of rules. Um, the homes have bedrooms, each with a private bathroom. The houses have a common kitchen, a dining room, laundry, living room, playroom. And again, it is not a home, a hotel, it's a home. So each house is decorated in the flavor and style of the city that it's located in. And the real secret behind these houses is not their beautiful, is not their furnishings, but rather it's the families that live within these houses. These houses come to life. You can almost hear them, you can almost hear that heartbeat when you walk through them. And you can actually feel the love and comfort you get from family. At Fisher House, we focus on taking care of the most basic needs. The things that you forget about during a crisis like, where am I gonna sleep and what am I gonna eat? We try and remove all those bur burdens that uh, all the burdens we possibly can so that the family only has one thing to worry about, going to the hospital and taking care of their loved one. And if that's all they need to focus on, then that loved one will heal and they can move on with their lives. Some families stay one night, um, and we've had many families who have stayed well over three years. There is no definitive time that you can stay there. It's as long as you need the house. We help our service members and, their veter and the veterans by taking care of their families. So currently, we have 85 Fisher houses across the United States, in Germany, and we have one in the UK. Um, since 1990, our homes have helped 368,000 families. We've provided over 8.7 million nights of lodging, and we've saved families over $451 million in saving. So what do I do at Fisher House? I obviously don't build the houses. I work on the programs that actually enhance the mission of what we do. As I mentioned before, I'm the Vice President of Strategic Initiatives. Sometimes I say I got that name because they didn't know what else to call me. Um, I'm incredibly proud of Fisher House and what we do. Since day one, I realized it was a very special place to work. And so I began to look for ways that we could grow programs um, not just the one program that I was hired to run, but more. And over time, we grew that and created more and more programs that were directly supporting the mission and had the focus on the families. Because focusing on our families means that people are healing, families are growing closer together, and lives are being saved. So today, we have four programs, Hero Miles, Hotels for Heroes, our family programs at Warrior Games and Invictus Games. So our first program, Hero Miles, w which is where I first started, um, it's an amazing program. It uses, and it's a very simple concept, we use donated frequent flyer miles to get families to the bedside of our wounded, injured, and ill service members. And we also use those miles so that we can fly service members and veterans to events that will continue their recovery, such as Warrior Games, Invictus Games, Adaptive Sports. Um, since the inception of the program in 2004, we have provided over 76,000 round-trip airline tickets to those in need and saved families $110 million. So I'm going to show a quick video on Hero Miles and one family that uh, was directly impacted. There's nothing. 
something special about this day, May 26, 2011. I was leading the patrol we were on back to our base. Out of nowhere, I, it felt like I got hit by a wrecking ball. I hit the ground and saw a cloud of dust in the air. I sat up and uh, just this nauseating, gut-wrenching feeling to see that my legs weren't there at all. And they put me on the helicopter. And, uh, at that point, it blacked out. And I didn't wake up again until I was back in the US. When you first get that news, you're, you're really overwhelmed with the sense of wanting to be there. Hero Miles really helped us get to Greg as quickly as possible. If I wanted someone to come visit me, there was really no questions asked. We'd submit a request through Hero Miles. By the end of the day, it was approved. They'd have a flight. They didn't have to worry about a cost at all. But I think having us there definitely helped. And I think he's much further along today than he would have been if, if we hadn't been there for him. Thank, Thank you, Hero Miles, for bringing us together when we needed it most. So that was Hero Miles, and, and the young man that was on that video, pretty amazing. Since then, he is currently at Harvard going to medical school and decided to give back um, to the military to be able to help others that are in need as well. So he's come a long way. Um, our next program, Hotels for Heroes, very similar to Hero Miles. It supports when a Fisher house is full and we can't put a family there. Instead of adding to the burdens and saying, sorry, you need to get a hotel room, we're able to put a family in a hotel room using donated hotel points. Um, and so I always refer to those hotels as the mobile Fisher houses. They're there to take care of those families when we can't. And then as soon as a room opens up, they're able to move into a Fisher house. So we started that program in 2012. Since then, we've provided 20,000 nights of lodging at hotels and saved families over $3.6 million in lodging. Um, Warrior Games and Invictus Games. Uh, many of you are probably familiar with these two programs, and some people here I know have competed themselves in those games. Um, and so Warrior Games began in the United States. Prince Harry went to Warrior Games, loved the concept, and said, we need to do this, but on an international level. And so one of the things when I first went to Warrior Games that I found was that there was no family programming the first year. In fact, the United States Olympic Committee, when I asked them where are the families, said to me, well, families, that, that's not what we do. We do medals. We count medals. And, and so my response was them, to them was, sure, that's great. You can count medals, but that's for Olympians. And, and, and when we're at the Olympics, I expect you to win gold medals. But when it comes to our military families, they want their families by their side. They want the families who have worked so hard with them you know, during these times and now are succeeding. That, that's what's really important to them. And looking at these families, I realized that no matter who they were, where they came from, whether they were officers or enlisted, whether they were big families or small families, despite their makeup, they all shared the same basic desire of staying together as a family. They all wanted to help their loved ones get better. They all had the same needs, to be loved and supported when they were most vulnerable and most in need. So based on the principle of keeping it simple, at Fisher House, we look to provide programming for those family members, supporting their loved ones. And so we create what I call now the mini model, mini Fisher House model, um, and created these family programs. And so the way it works is, at, at Warrior Games, we have about 400 athletes competing in Paralympic sporting events, very similar to Invictus Games. Um, and, and it used to just be the United States broken up by service branch. But since we started nine years ago, we now have different countries that also compete in those games as well. Um, and Invictus Games, as many of you know, it's 20 uh, nations coming up this year with 500 athletes. So. We created this, and, and so what do we include in that model? Again, with Fisher House, we, we're worried about taking care of the basic needs. What do these families actually need? Um, we provide them transportation. We fly family members to the games so they can be there. We provide their lodging for 10 nights at Warrior Games. Um, we provide a registration process where we walk every family 
through the week and tell them, here's what you need, what you're going to be expect. What, here is what is going to go on this week. What can you expect? Because for us, the goal, we want the family to succeed. For the first time, that service member, that veteran, that wounded warrior is not with them in their hotel. This is respite for them, and it allows them the opportunity to go and cheer their loved one on. We provide all of their meals, all of their uniform and gear. We give them all VIP credentialing and access. We have volunteers and staff that are there to support them the entire way through. And one of the really important things is we have partners. Our partners enhance the mission. Um, I mention this because Fisher House cannot be everything to everybody, but what we can do is be a good partner to each other and to other organizations, to the Department of Defense and to the Department of Veteran Affairs. And so we look for ways to work together so that we can provide families an incredible experience. So millions of dollars are spent. What's the outcome? What do we get? Families that feel loved and taken care of. Families that can focus on cheering their loved ones on. The journey has been very long for these families. And finally, they can celebrate the accomplishments and see things, in many cases, in a clearer light. So one quick example I'll give you. There was a Marine family, um, and this Marine father, a young man named John is a Marine. Um, his father was, uh, came to the Warrior Games, was not happy to be there at all. In fact, he, I looked at him and I welcomed him, and he said, don't welcome me. I don't want to be here. I said, okay, so why are you here? And he said, well, I'm only here because my son John asked me to be here, but he's wasting all of his time on a bicycle when what he should be doing is finding a job and get on with his life. And so I smiled and I said, well, I hope you enjoy your week nonetheless. Um, there's not a lot you can say to someone who's pretty bitter and angry. And so the next day was cycling. And I remember getting off the bus and John's dad was getting off the bus. And he was this big Marine dad, kind of grizzly looking, a big beard. And he kind of walked down to, the, to where the ending, the finish line was for, um, for cycling. And he was watching and watching. And I saw John coming around the bend. And, um, and I was watching this dad to see if he would notice his son. And all of a sudden, he turned and he said, there's John. And he had the smile on his face. And he's watching and watching. And as he came around the bend, John turned and caught his dad's eye. And all of a sudden, he had this huge smile on his face. And you could audibly hear his father just go, <gasps> and just pause. And he turned, and he had tears running down his face. And he said, that's my son. He said, that's my son, John, who, who I haven't recognized in the last two years. And, um, and so I said, run to the finish line so you can see him. So he ran to the finish line, and, and that was that. And I didn't think much of it. Um, and the next day, I saw John's dad in the lobby, and he came up to me, and he said, I owe you an apology. I said, well, why do you owe me an apology? And he said, because when I got here, I told you I didn't want to be here, and I didn't understand why I needed to be here. But you know what? Now I do. He said, for the first time, I saw the John, the same kid we sent to war. I said, he said, I finally saw him, his smile. It was like he was five years old and so proud. Um, and he said, and now I know why he rides his bike, and we're going to start to ride bikes as a family together. And you know what? In that moment, that was one family. And if we saved that one family, and now they can be a family together, then that's worth millions and millions, and you can't even put a price tag on that. So, so I tell you, the same model, what's pretty exciting, has grown, and it's the same model that you see at Invictus Games today. And those families, and internationally, families are learning what it means to have their family by their side and to serve with them and to heal and to be on that recovery path as well. And so we're about coming full circle. You know, there's a lot of family programs in the United States. And I think the most important question we need to ask is, are these programs meeting the basic desire or the basic needs of these families? If a family's basic needs are, being, are not being supported and met, then how can we expect them to heal? How can we expect them to absorb the programming that so many others want to give them and want them to put into practice? And so we create this Fisher House model again and again, that vision of Zachary and Elizabeth Fisher had so many years ago.
because a family's love is good medicine. And before I end, I want to thank all of you who are here today in this audience. Most importantly, because just by showing up, you're showing how much you care and that you want to be part of a solution. Our CEO, Ken Fisher, talked about that. Be part of a solution. Thank you all for letting me tell you about my family, about how Fisher House and I both support that premise of because a family is good medicine.